Welcome to Tiny Tomatoes Airline. This is your captain speaking. What's up? Welcome back to Tiny Tomato Airlines. Um, it's so wonderful to have you here. Please take a seat, relax. There's not a lot of room. There's kind of a lot of you guys here. So, uh, you know, do the best you can. This fine day, we're taking another quite uh, long flight around the world because I have another book haul full of different countries to show you guys today. I have 15 countries we're gonna go to. So definitely gonna get a uh, layover hangover, if you know what I'm saying. Before we get into the book haul, we have a pre-book haul. Ooh. This video is once again sponsored by Book of the Month. Thank you guys so much for your support. It helps so much. Book of the Month is an online book subscription service that specializes in picking out new releases. So basically their team does what sounds exactly like my dream job. They read tons and tons of books every single month and then they will pick the top five that they think are the best from a variety of different genres. If you're not thrilled or jazzed, Jazzy hands. Buy any of the picks that they chose for that month. You can 100% skip completely free of charge and then hop back on. Here's a stack of books that they picked for August. First up, we have The Inheritance of Orquidea Divina and this is by Zorada Cordova. I actually read one of Cordova's books um, last year in 2020 because she actually wrote a Star Wars um, novel as well. So I'm really excited to see something completely different from her. The Inheritance is about the Montoya family. We follow Orquidea who invites them to her own funeral to collect their inheritance. And seven years later, the gifts that she has given them kind of manifest in different ways for different members of the family. Then we have Once There Were Wolves by Charlotte McConaughey. This is a thriller about a woman named Inti who arrives in Scotland with her twin sister. And they are both biologists who are leading the project to reintroduce gray wolves into the highlands. However, there's a ton of prejudice because a farmer is found dead and lots of local people blame the wolves. And when the man that she is falling for seems to be a main suspect, things get a little scary. Then we have Damnation Spring by Ash Davidson. This one is set in 1977 and we are following Rich's family who has lived on California's rugged coast, making their living out of the redwood forest. But things are a lot darker than it seems because his wife starts to have miscarriages and so do other women around and they think a lot of what is going on negative things in nature and in ourselves are due to what the logging company is doing and how they're using pesticides and stuff like that. So yeah. Then we have The Heart Print Symbol by Helen Huang. I'm really excited to get to this one even though I did DNF. Um, the Kiss Quotient. So we are following a violinist named Anna and she has achieved a bit of fame through a YouTube video that she uploaded when all of a sudden her boyfriend announces that he wants an open relationship. She is super hurt by this so she decides that she's going to have a series of one night stands. So she enlists the help of a motorcyclist named Quan to help her do this but things start to get a bit deeper between them. Finally, we have Not a Happy Family by Sherry LaPena. This one is set in upstate New York and we are following Fred and Sheila who are really, really rich but they are brutally murdered the night after Easter dinner. Each of these children stands to inherit millions from the deaths of their parents and so it just seems like it's this really tangled web of deceit. Kind of gives me like knives out vibes. You can also use my code Emmy to get your first box for $9.99. All right that's our pretty little mini book haul before we go to a whole bunch of countries so hopefully you're rested up. Thank you so much book of the month. I love working with you guys. Unfortunately right now they only ship within the U.S. but going away from the U.S. all these books are from other places in the world so let's get into the book haul. I'll also leave up above links to book hauls I've previously done from around the world, as well as videos that I've done on books that I have read so far this year. Um, anyway, this first country is one that I've already read from so far this year, but um, not one that I've included in a book haul. So anyway, enough of the blibbity blab. It is Machado. Machado de Assis. I love you. <laughs> I love you so much. Um, this is the posthumous memoirs of Brasco Bass. This is the one that everyone screams at me to read continuously because I did start with The Alienist and other short stories uh, from this author as well, which was fantastic. Uh, I was really happy to gain like a little bit of, you know, kind of groundwork reading some of his shorter fiction. And now I am so ready. I am beyond ready. I'm just ready to go into this because this sounds like everything I've ever wanted to read about ever. Essentially, this is about a man who is writing his memoir. He's dead, um, hence it is a posthumous memoir. And he dedicates it to like the, the, the other corpses. No, 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 this isn't about zombies. The other worms that are eating his corpse. We are following essentially the ghost of a decadent and disagreeable aristocrat as he's going about writing his memoirs, telling us about his life. If I know um, if anything from the alienist and other stuff will be inserted in here, it should be so funny, but in such like a devastatingly clever kind of way. I love his description. I love the way that he creates sentences, at least in his short stories, because they were so just like, blunt some of them were super short and just the way that his like 
his prose went was just like it lent itself so much to comedic genius in my opinion like i thought it was brilliant in 160 brief chapters he tells of his failed romances and half-hearted political ambitions serves up harebrained philosophies and complains with gusto from the depths of his grave this one's translated by flora thompson devoe so that is that one uh i just want to get sucked into this black hole i i this book is really really high up on my tbr um, as well, this one was a gift from a subscriber again. So thank you so much, Lucas. Thank you. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to read this. So thank you, Brazil. All right, next up, we're going to go to Spain. This one I got really recently. Something I also want to say, there's going to be an insane amount of book hauls on my channel. Totally hope that's okay, but I have acquired so many books. Not for myself. I didn't go out and buy them. I put myself on a little bit of a ban because moving almost 600 books into this new apartment. Have I even said? Welcome to the new apartment. Things have been a little bit too crazy over here. Like, honestly, I'm not gonna go on a little life update right now. Maybe I'll talk more about it in a vlog, but moving 600 books was a little bit exhausting. My every muscle in my arms, in my noodly arms still hurts. So I put myself on a little bit of a ban, but uh, you guys have not put yourselves on a ban. Therefore, I have a lot of birthday book haul content as well as a whole other around the world book haul coming but i just didn't want to go over 15 because that seemed like a lot of time in the air for you guys and another classics book haul coming so anyway this was a ramble i think this one was sent to me for my birthday or it was just sent very kindly for no reason um but it didn't have a note so i don't know who sent me the one that we're choosing for spain which is marina by carlos ruiz Zephon. Oh, I have not read Shadow of the Wind, but this one is definitely a contender that I would even love to pick for the Dark Academics Book Club potentially because I have the next pick after Carolyn. Anyway, this one is set in 1980 and it is definitely a gothic tale. We are following this young guy named Oscar and he vanishes from his knows where the heck he is. But then it's revealed that he's been with the mysterious Marina. She takes him on a date to a graveyard, goals, where they witness this kind of strange, grotesque ritual. So when Oscar and Marina follow this strange, ghostly woman that appears out of this coach, they are taken in apparently to post-war Barcelona, where a dark secret lies waiting. So I am so excited. This just sounds like it has so many different elements. There's butterflies on the cover, which is always a good sign. And it just sounds so spooky, so grotesque, so strange, magical. I think there's like, yeah, a little bit of time travel happening here. So wow, I'm so excited. Um, thank you, whoever sent me this. Thank you so much. Next up, we're gonna go to Turkey. Turkey is also a country that I've read from this year because I got to read some Orhan. So good. But this next one is also an author that everyone has been screaming in the comment section about. So we have 10 minutes, 38 seconds in this strange world by Alif Shafak. Um, also don't know who this is from. So if this was you, thank you so much. This one essentially, oh, this one sounds so brutally amazing. So we follow this woman she dies it's once again kind of this strange death narrative kind of thing because um i don't know how she dies she has been murdered and left in a dumpster outside istanbul and her name is tequila so in the last 10 minutes and 38 seconds of her life she enters a state of kind of heightened awareness and starts to remember everything about her life and so essentially this book is all about like the last minutes of her consciousness i believe like going through whatever it's going through before it fades out forever this is that she remembers her life and the lives of others who are outcasts like her so this sounds like it's going to be absolutely tormenting but in a really good way so i cannot wait to read more from Alif as well and so many of you guys have yelled at me to talk about her for turkey so that is this one next up i was doing some research on some african literature literature from different african countries and there were a few that really really caught my eye so this one is from zimbabwe so i ordered this and then actually in the time Kind of that it was getting here i already knocked off a book for zimbabwe which i talked about in my july wrap-up but now i have another one which i'm really excited about because the one i read from zimbabwe was amazing so this one is the hairdresser of ferrari by tendai huchu and this one is more you know of a modern book i want to say almost contemporary because the one that i've read from zimbabwe so far was definitely historical fiction we are following a hairdresser whose name is Bimbai, and all of a sudden her world is kind of knocked upside down when we have this man the good-looking smooth-talking dumi 
Misani who enters the beauty treatment salon and kind of knocks her off of her throne because she's the one who's running things, she knows what's going on, and this guy just kind of completely dismantles the balance of this hair salon. Eventually, they become kind of tentative friends. I believe that she becomes his landlady, but then there's some secrets that are digested by either party and things start to go askew. I also know that this talks a lot about either inflation or post-inflation and everything that was going on like that in Zimbabwe, so it should be really, really interesting as well. Um, apparently it's very humorous and there's a lot of satire and stuff like that about society too, so it should be really, really interesting. So that is Zimbabwe. I'm excited. If anyone has any thoughts on these or like, you know, where I should start or any other picks or anything like that, please always leave them in the comments. The comment sections of like these videos, these kinds of videos are my favorite because they're just like a wealth of information from all of you guys. So thank you so much. But that is that one. Next up, we have Palestine. And so for this one, we have Minor Detail by Adania Shibli. This one was also sent to me. Um, I, uh, I don't think there was a note. No, whoever you are, like, I would love to thank you. I'd love to give you a huge, big, big hug. This one is translated by Elizabeth Jacquette, um, and minor detail is set in 1949. This one begins during the summer of 1949, one year after the war that the Palestinians mourn as the Nakba, the catastrophe that led to the displacement and expulsion of some 700,000 people. Israeli soldiers attack a group of people in the desert and they kill everyone except a young teenage girl. So after this teenage girl is eventually killed, there's some awful things that happen to her. This book takes place, I believe, years later and it switches um, because we go to near present day and we have a woman who's trying to uncover some of the details surrounding what happened to this girl who was murdered, not only because it's of particular infamy, but also because it was committed 25 years, exactly 25 years to the day um, before this woman was born. So we have these like two competing narratives in here. This sounds like it's gonna be um, extremely informative, extremely heartbreaking and it's a super short one so this one is also super high on my tbr and i think this is just gonna be absolutely devastating so that is minor detail this one i've had on my shelf for a long time but i also want to include it in this as well because so many people say of course it is the book that i have to read for this particular country and so for the philippines we have touch me not this one um this is actually one of the first books that i ever talked about on my booktube channel when i started it um, the video where I do is completely, it's, it's, I think I deleted it or it's private because I just can't take that level of cringe. Not that we've come much further. This one was actually on my TBR for the Asian Readathon in I think 2019, um, or 2018, but I never got around to it. So I am so excited to get to it sometime soon because so many people, it's just, this book is so celebrated. I hear so much about it. Um, I have a vague, foggy idea of what it's about, but I don't really want to know too much about the synopsis because this is a book that I just want to go into and let it kind of build its own little world and castle around me and just experience it. But it's also the novel, it says on the back, that sparked the Philippine Revolution, so I don't know. Um, I just, I can't wait for how much like power and oomph is going to be in this book. Like I just, I've heard you guys rave about it so much. Um, and it's also, I know, a love story set against the backdrop of uh, repression, torture, and murder that is happening in the Philippines at the time that this book takes place. And this one is translated by Harold Augenbraum. Next, we're gonna bounce over to Russia and we have the Kreutzer Sonata and other stories by Tolstoy. Of course, this had to be um, from Tolstoy because yeah. This one is translated by Roger Cockrell. And we will of course be getting to the Kreutzer Sonata as well as all of the other Tolstoy short stories for the Dickens vs. Tolstoy book club. Right now we're in the middle of Anna Karenina for August and then after that is of course another Dickens. And then I don't know when we'll be getting to the rest of these, but either way, this will be read very soon. This one also has The Prisoner of the Caucasus, Master and Man, and After the Ball. So yeah, this is also just such a beautiful edition. So that is The Kreutzer Sonata. For Indonesia, we have This Earth of Mankind. This is the first book in a quartet. This is an absolutely stunning copy. Um, oh yeah, it's actually called the Buru Quartet properly. Um, and we're following a young Javanese student who is of great intelligence, sensitivity, and ambition. This one is set in 19th century Java, so he's living equally amongst the colonized and colonizers. So the young man that we are following, he is also the son of a noble family, so he kind of moves in and amongst the Dutch 
with ease but of course he's never really let in fully to their world i believe it also complicates matters that he starts to fall in love with a young girl named annalise who is indo-european and they form a connection and then it's about their relationship as well against this backdrop of everything that's going on um i love when authors like explore what's happening in a country or a political or social situation through someone's relationship or two people's relationship of course with each other it's just like such a playground and a battleground and like a landscape that is alive and emotionally put together and you can like feel everything that everything is feeling if that makes sense so anyway i'm really excited for this one so that is from indonesia next up we have hungary which i'm really excited about we have satan tango by laszlo krasno orkai so this one the man booker international prize i don't know what year it was but this looks absolutely like i just want to put my teeth in this book and eat it no I want to read it. <laughs> what am I saying? So we are following life in a Hungarian town in the aftermath of like this utopian communist dream. Things are going okay. You know, there's like farms and stuff that's going on. But then this man who everyone in the village long thought to be dead returns. He's super charismatic. Uh, he can get people to follow him very, very easily. And so everyone starts to fall under his spell, but it's not clear like what he's really doing, what he really stands for. It says, is he a prophet, a secret agent, or the devil himself? The synopsis is so vague, but um, this is this is also a beautiful cover. Look at it. Ooh, ooh, nice. Anyway, that is Hungary. I'm so excited to read this. I've also got a few more books from Hungary on my shelves as well. So is this a good place to start? This is a good place to start. From Jamaica, this one is also one I've had on my shelves for a little bit, and this is The Wonderful Adventures of Mrs. Sequel in Many Lands by Mary Sequel. This is another one, I believe we have a few coming up that are more nonfiction, and this one definitely is. This is, again, a memoir by Mary Sequel, who was born in Jamaica, and then when the Crimean War broke out, she uh, she's a nurse, and so she decided to travel over there to help, but of course she is met with racism, with everything with prejudice and she's not really allowed to you know be as involved and work as hard and do what she's supposed to do as a nurse over there to actually help people and so what she decides to do instead is act as a doctor and mother to wounded soldiers while running her business which is called the british motel british hotel a witness to major battles sequel gives vivid accounts of how she coped with disease bombardment and other hardships at the battlefront this is just going to serve such an amazing um illuminatory is that a word kind of story and narrative and of course history and stuff like that so that is the wonderful adventures for india we have one i'm really excited to read this one i almost brought with me to the cottage um to read while i was there because it kind of coincides with another book that we have in this hall as well but for india we have the gitanjali which is a collection of poetry by takur so yeah this is a collection of poems we have 157 of them that were published in 1910. i'm so excited to get into these it also contains a few illustrations as well so i've heard so many things about this collection and about this poet by now especially in the next book that i'm going to mention so yeah cannot wait to read this one probably gonna read this one very very soon because i've been consuming a lot of poetry recently so yeah all right, the next one that kind of goes along with that is from Romania. It's one that I'm currently in the middle of. I am 120 pages through Bangle Nights. So um, Bangle Nights, this is the pick for Romania. So excited and I am loving it so, so much. I'm loving it so much. But the reason these two kind of go together is because in Bangle Nights, we are following um, this young man who's arrived in India and he is staying with an Indian family and he falls in love with the daughter of this family. But also in here, Takur plays a very large role, a lot of his poetry and who he is as a person and a poet himself. Um, he's come up a bunch, a bunch of times and so it makes me really, really interested to get into his work as well. But this one is so devastating because it follows this relationship that has so much pressure and so many contradictions as well as confines and constraints on it between this young man um, and this young girl in India and it's just so devastating it's so tragic it is a tragic love story it's also a true story um, and then the young woman in this case she wrote her own novel 40 years later calls it does not die as like a response to this novel which is ah, have to read that one after this but um, yeah I'm really really liking this it it like examines a lot of different things it's also so devastating and so hard to read at some points um especially because this was written i think in 1933 so 
yeah, but I'm really, really loving it. Um, and it's just like, it's just really good. So that is Bengal Nights. From France, we're gonna have another memoir. We have The Diving Bell and the Butterfly by Jean-Dominique Bobby. So this one is about a man and he suffers a stroke. This is once again, like a memoir, nonfiction. Um, he suffers a stroke and he is left with what is known as locked in syndrome because he is completely paralyzed. For once he had been renowned for his gregariousness and wit, he now finds himself imprisoned in an inert body, able to communicate only by blinking his left eye. So he writes this after he suffers the stroke and is now left completely permanently paralyzed and it's about the power of imagination but also about what consciousness can do because a lot of this memoir i believe is about him like living through his writing and like imagining different things that he would be able to do if he weren't in his condition he tells us what it is like to spend a day with his children to imagine lying in bed beside his lover to conjure up the flavor of delectable meals even he even as he is fed by tube um and of course none of these things happen so this is just going to be absolutely devastating i think i'm going to I don't know, this one's gonna be a really hard one. And yeah, I think it's just gonna hit a lot of notes for me as well. So that is The Diving Bell and the Butterfly. All right, coming up to the last couple of ones here, we have Palace Walk, um, which is also part of a trilogy. This is volume one and this is by Mafuz. I think this was also not, yes, there was no note in here. So whoever gave me this, thank you so much because this came recently as well. So this one tells the story of a family against the backdrop of an ever-changing Cairo. We follow different members of the family, what they're getting up to. Um, it reminds me a little bit like just of the synopsis on the back of like My Brilliant Friend and the Neapolitan novels by Ferrante because that very much tells the story of mostly a friendship between two girls, but also the neighborhood and the city of Naples and different things that are going on, but we're following members of the family in Cairo. We follow the wife, Amina, his daughters, Aisha and Khadija, and his three sons. We have idealistic, hedonist, and the soul-searching intellect. It says the family's trials like mirror those of what's going on in their own country. So again, that's kind of what I was talking about, which I love reading about. And on the front, he is compared to Dickens as well, which is exciting. So that is Palace Walk. Thank you, Egypt. And finally, we have Afghanistan. You guys told me if I showed any other book for Afghanistan, you would not fly on Tiny Tomatoes Airlines anymore. Um, so I had to show A Thousand Splendid Sons. I recently found this at a thrift store and I know Lucy from Crescent Pages, she's just raved about this so much recently that like it made me really excited to go out and like find a copy. So when I did see this, I immediately grabbed it. This is by Khaled Husseini and I don't know too much about this actually. I believe this is about the Afghan refugee crisis, but I'm not sure like specifically what else it follows. So um, I think probably this is a book that I should go into with no idea because I've heard it's so powerful, so impactful, so heartbreaking and just like so a lot. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, I cannot wait for this one as well. And that is the last one. Thank you, Afghanistan. So yeah, that was our little trip today. How you doing? We covered a lot of ground. Um, thank you so much to those of you who sent me these books. Um, if they're from your country and you sent them specifically for this, I'm not sure, but thank you. And if you just sent them for no reason, thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you got some good recommendations. Once again, if you have any um, and countries you'd like to see included in the next one, please let me know. I do have one before this with a whole bunch of countries and I do have, I said, another one coming that I tried to split up in here as well. So anyway. Thank you once again to Book of the Month, and yeah, welcome to the new place. I can't wait to show you guys around, um, and I hope you enjoyed your trip today. There will be complimentary tiny tomatoes on your way out, so thank you so much for watching, and get home safely. Ciao!